Thank you for joining us this morning. This has become an annual tradition for Atlantic Media, this editorial briefing on Saturday morning. As you can see, it grows every year. Um, we're excited to have a, a great topic this year on um, veterans re-entering the workforce, uh, the opportunities and the challenges that we have with veterans returning from war. Um, we've got a great panel of speakers today, and I just want to briefly walk you through some of the things that we're going to do. So as Steve has already introduced himself vocally, but I'll do it over the mic for the people on the webcast. Uh, we have, Steve is, works for The Atlantic and National. He is a moose friend. Um, so he's cooked up a great program with speakers. He's going to have a great panel discussion a little bit. We're going to start off with a discussion from Kevin Barron. Um, if you haven't had a chance to get a mimosa and take it easy, we'll have mimosas running, coffee running, whatever you need. Uh, feel free just to get it. This is always kind of an informal briefing. Um, you know, these events wouldn't be possible without the support of our underwriters, and we're really thankful that they allow us to do everything that we do around White House correspondence to celebrate the correspondence, the scholars, and the editors of our publications. Um, so today, I want to introduce our first uh, presenting level underwriter, Pacific Gas and Electric Company. Uh, we have some uh, remarks here from uh, my friend, Colonel John Busterud. Uh He's director and lead counsel at PG&E. He's going to join the floor and make a few brief remarks to get us started. Colonel? Thank you. Company, Pacific Gas and Electric, is sponsoring this important discussion. Uh, once again, my name is John Bustrude. I'm a director and lead counsel uh, for PG&E. But in addition to being a company lawyer, during my career, I also have served in the U.S. Army Reserve as a civil affairs officer. Yeah, in 2005, I was mobilized and deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. And uh, in 2012, I deployed again to Djibouti, Africa, uh, in support of uh, Operation Enduring Freedom for the Combined Joint Task Force Horn of Africa. I also served extensively over the last decade uh, on the uh, Korean Peninsula, and uh, I just retired uh, from the reserves uh, last November uh, as a colonel. Like so many other veterans, uh, my military experience enhanced my life uh, personally and, uh, and in my civilian career by providing leadership opportunities uh, focus on mission, uh, personal accountability, uh, planning and execution, and as well, and perhaps most importantly, concern for the welfare and support of my fellow service members and their families. I consider myself extremely lucky to have had the opportunity to serve this great nation and to be employed by PG&E, a company that supports its veterans as well as its citizen soldiers currently serving in the Guard and Reserve. I know that others who served in the military haven't been so fortunate. It's been well documented that some veterans can face an uphill battle when coming home, in not only getting the medical assistance they may need, but also in gaining the training and guidance to find a job in the civilian sector and to develop a career that will provide for them and their families over the long term. The employment challenges veterans face are varied, and I'm sure we'll hear more about that this morning. Sometimes it's a question of matching skills with opportunities, and in other cases, veterans may simply not be aware of the opportunities that are out there. At PG&E, we don't just want to fill jobs, we want to create careers. We've discovered that we can provide careers and that veterans make outstanding employees. Veterans have the skills and culture that support teamwork, safety, and service. These all translate wonderfully to the challenges we face in delivering safe, reliable energy to the 16 million Americans we serve. One specific way PG&E has helped veterans transition into utility careers is through our Power Pathway program. You'll find a handout describing that program on your chair this morning. Or they can be made available. <laughs> the military also taught you to adapt. 300 veterans have graduated from the program since it began six years ago and nearly 80% of them have landed careers in the utility industry. Once veterans are on board at PG&E, they can join the company's Veteran Employee Resource Group and participate in our mentorship program, both of which provide an outstanding support network. I'm a board member of PG&E's Veterans Employee Resource Group, and I'm proud to say that our ranks have grown to over 1,000 since the organization was founded five years ago. In closing, let me say to the veterans in the audience today, Thank you for your service and welcome home. And to the policymakers and employees who are present, 
Thank you in advance for doing the right thing for our veterans. We at PG&E look forward to our continued engagement on this important issue. Thank you.